I told myself then, well, I can take this job and work for a few years and, and move on to something else. And of course, as we know, that was 30 years ago. There's a, a big amount of pride that comes with this job because you know that the work you're doing is servicing the producers of our state, not only our state, but producers around the, our nation and even the world today. And there's a lot of satisfaction that comes from that. I attended University of Arkansas at Monticello to earn a degree in uh, agricultural business. When I finished uh, my Bachelor of Science degree, I started interviewing and I received a phone call from Maxie Taylor. Wanted to know if I'd like to come over and interview for a vacant position here as a research specialist. A couple of days later, he'd called me back and told me I had the job, and I thought, great, you know, this is right down my alley. I'll get to do research, but continue in and working on a, a row crop type farm. Well, a few years passed and I really became interested, decided to go on and uh, further my education and, and uh, get a, earn a master's degree in agronomy. In 91, I finished that degree and uh, 93, uh, Maxie Taylor retired and they appointed me director here at the station. Um, and I've been here ever since and 30 years later, so. You know, a lot of things I could have done over the years uh, that I could have probably made twice the money that I make here today, but I don't think I could have been any more satisfied with the job that I'm doing today. So one of the things I was charged with in order to keep up our research programs was to come up with and funding and uh, newer types of equipment to mechanize to speed up our operation and keep the efficiency level there. The plot combine behind me um, is an example of some of that, where it used to take 15 to 16 people to cut soybean plots by hand, bundle them, physically tote them out of the field. Today, one man can cut five to 600 plots a day with the machine, have it all weighed, downloaded onto an Excel format and emailed to the PI within minutes after he's completed the harvesting task. So that is very, very efficient. It makes the information more available to the producers today. Well, and one way we've done this is through GPS, you know, GPS instrumentation, and uh, that's enabled us to maintain continuity of the research plots in the field from year to year without physical type markers in the field. So we can come in and pretty well do what we, we need to do. And a lot of this would not have been possible if several years ago we had not started an Arkansas Soybean Promotion Board. This has allowed over the years for us to maintain a high level of, of research plots to, to increase and maintain a, you know, soybean yields to our producers in the state. And without a lot of that funding, this would not have been possible. To maintain sustainability, we've got to be able to maintain our natural, most greatest natural resource, and, and that's our land. And the sustainability of that land in order to feed a population of 2050, which is over 9 billion people estimated in the world at that time. Maintaining, you know, a set of research guidelines for this station that will help answer a small portion or a larger portion of that puzzle as to what we need to be doing in order to maintain that sustainability. That would be, you know, one of the overall goals of my job. So it has to start today in order to get to 2050. I fell in love with research. I fell in love with the people. And you know, this has been my life and we're like a family here. People have to be happy in what they do first and money second, in my opinion. But that's where we are today. And I wouldn't go back and change a thing.